Okay, I think we are ready. Ready to go. Okay. <clears throat> Someone told me that uh, this shirt fits me so well, it looks, you know, makes me look really good. So this is the Combs shirt. And uh, when I wear this and uh, be with my son, he thinks he, he can take it off. So he always try to grab, you know. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Well, uh, another opportunity for me to be a, a very humble um, part of Kimber <clears throat> or Guru Kimber, which is uh, activity. Mm. And uh, throughout Rumbuche's life, uh, he, he worked extremely hard to establish uh, the centers and uh, KTCs and uh, sometimes it's uh, not so hard to uh, create a center, but uh, to maintain uh, is extremely challenge. Uh, but uh, uh, throughout Rinpoche's life, he uh, physically traveled his mnemonicaya form and uh, <clears throat> people who saw him uh, in person, uh, you know, and heard his teachings and, uh, you know, reading his books benefited so much uh, and uh, for me when I, uh, I have uh, difficulties uh, I wouldn't say when you know often times <laughs> uh, I'm one of those uh, uh individual that uh, has a very high emotional high emotion uh, disorder <laughs> and uh, often uh, you know uh, suffering a lot but uh, uh, when you uh, Think of Rinpoche, uh, not supplicating, but just simply think of him, you know. Uh, just an image, just to, you think of his image and his, uh, <clears throat> whether he smile or not, I, I don't really care. Uh, you know, his uh, just uh, body language and uh, uh, special voice and, uh, uh, that's all you need, you know, when you think of that, you kind of sense of uh, relieving uh, your pain right away, in which you kind of manifesting something special, kind of reduce your, your pain. <clears throat> I miss him a lot. I, I miss his uh, smell uh, because I, <clears throat> like 23 years, you know, um, Every time I go to see Rinpoche, I never fail to receive blessing. I just like you all have, a, most of you have the opportunity to see Rinpoche and uh, uh, <clears throat> if he's giving teaching, I just uh, you know, take his robes, uh, the upper part and just put on my, my my head and uh, and, uh, and that is not enough. <laughs> then you have to uh, touch your forehead with his uh, you know uh, knees or 
uh, you know, so he often give us, you know, his uh, forehead blessing. And uh, I miss his smell because uh, Rinpoche has a, uh, such heavenly, if there's such word, like heavenly smell. Um, and I never smell, uh, never smelled like that kind of uh, so <clears throat> uh, the fragrance. So if there's a, you know, if we use word like so sweet or so not just uh, you know uh, uh, like when you <clears throat> uh, smell a flower, and uh, we, we all like uh, flower. My, my wife likes flower a lot. She has flower garden, and all these bees, you know, enjoying that. You, know, you, you, you. I mean, I come from Tibet, and I, we we have a lot of smells. But that smell, normally, um, after you smell it, 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 you know, after that, it kind of goes away. But if you smell of uh, uh, you know, special, <clears throat> uh, his his body smell, his hand, or you know, there's there's something that you cannot really. Uh, identify uh, whether it's on his uh, <clears throat> body or it's on his, uh, his uh, clothes. And, uh, and my aunt, uh, Aunt Pema, some of you met, met her, used to say that you know, cause she used to uh, wash Rinpoche's clothes and she used to say that. Uh, I don't understand, you know, he, Aume, Aume's brother. And brother Rinpoche has a, a very special, a special, <clears throat> like uh, having a smell that I never, never smell from any sense or any individual, nobody. It's just so, and it doesn't go away, you know, for a long time. And uh, then there's a description in teachings about uh, the pure moral discipline, mm. and the smell of uh, fragments of uh, pure monastic vow, the pure uh, <clears throat> someone who you know protect all the vows uh, as a monastic, and of course you know which uh, was a uh, uh, bodhisattva. <clears throat> someone who protect uh, or the, keep the vow of uh, both Santa vow and then the Bajana vow and everything. So my point is that uh, uh, even though uh, we sometimes like students like myself and uh, others who are a little bit encouraged about, uh, you know, uh, maintaining uh, center or uh, practice and then sometimes we just think of Rinpoche and what he would say. Uh, if you say I having some problem with my practice, I having some problem, uh, he just uh, would say, oh, well, you know, keep going. Uh, and uh, in terms of problem with practice, this is the topic that we have today. Uh, and. Uh, <clears throat> If I read the topic, uh, um, so it is uh, turning daily problems into insight. Uh, and uh, people like myself uh, really, you know, uh, not knowing how to describe because, uh, you know, lacking of uh, my own. Uh, stable practice or such uh, wisdom, uh, but uh, uh, I would like to describe this uh, topic in uh, maybe uh, five points. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> uh, first, uh, the point is that uh, we often have this uh, tendency or problem or a habitual pattern that, you know, how we can uh, deal with our uh, difficulties or you know, suffering and uh, you know, emotions. Uh, and so because of this, um, 
it is natural. It is natural. Uh, as long as we are in this uh, samsara, suffering is a uh, part of our life. You know, this is uh, something we have created. <clears throat> the suffering that we have, whatever emotional uh, conditions. And uh, the great master Gambopa uh, explained that uh, mm, what is the definition uh, of uh, nirvana and what is the definition of uh, uh, samsara? The actual or definition of, uh, or let's say, nature of samsara and uh, nirvana are uh, uh, emptiness. Uh, there's no uh, difference. They are the embodiment of uh, emptiness. So without uh, <clears throat> categorizing uh, about suffering, let's, let's put it this way, and because uh, uh, teaching or practice has to be very practical. At the moment, we experience uh, negative thoughts uh, and whatever, you know, stress or, or, or depression or whatever feeling we're you know, experiencing. And uh, that disturbing emotion or whatever that bothers us uh, are inherently, inherently invisible, inherently emptiness, inherently transparent, uh, unlike what we normally uh, experience as uh, it hurts, right? It really hurts our feelings. Uh, it hurts uh, <clears throat> uh, our, um, our whatever suffering we experience, and especially emotions. And uh, so when you go back to the original of the suffering, uh, in all, let's say the nature of suffering, as Gambopa mentioned, <clears throat> it is uh, emptiness, you know, inherently uh, invisible, inherently uh, transparent. So he didn't say uh, the suffering is so concrete, su suffering is so real. Uh, uh, that is the first, uh, recognizing that you know suffering uh, the nature of suffering <clears throat> so the suffering mostly come from the cause of suffering which is the one uh, we are talking about you now emotion stress especially now there's the stress and emotion you know, all these turbulences but uh, once again you do want to remind the moment you experience uh, whatever emotion you you experience oh actually there's the emotion that i'm you know it's bothering me at you know right now but at the same time you know this emotion is invisible this emotion is a transparent this emotion is emptiness so another word the other side of the emotion has a, a natural healing other side of emotion has natural healing. It's uh, unlike uh, how we describe based on our concrete judgmental thought. Uh, we have this very rigid <clears throat> or such very stubborn, hab <laughs> stubborn habitual patterns always holds that you know, whenever that emotion that you don't like, we are. <clears throat> And most, uh, you know, we are very picky, right? We, we just only want to have this positive feelings or something blissful or such. So we must understand that the daily problem that we experience, uh, we, we label as a problem, but if you analyze now, which portion of the problem is, uh, let's say, which part of the problem is more, uh, I mean, compared to physical problem and emotion problem, 
which one is uh, more stronger or which one is uh, more obvious? Well, of course, you know, physically, uh, we all have uh, problems. Uh, I'll give you a perfect example. <laughs> uh, one uh, always has to go back to our, our guru, uh, Kembur Muche. So Kembur Muche lived up to 96 years. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> la, la, let's, uh, uh, let's kind of think of uh, your own age and uh, you know well, you feel like you have a lot of problems physically well people do have problems because uh, this physical body is uh, based on comic uh, uh, comic uh, creation and there's no way that we don't have problem however so how Rumbuche turned his daily problems uh, into uh, insight. Uh, past 23 years, I, I, I barely remember that Rinpoche complained about uh, his physical condition. He had uh, <clears throat> sometimes knee pain and of course, uh, but he always, he always, sometimes if he has, you know, his knee pain or joint pain, he always say, oh, I have some joint pain or I have some you know, knee pain. But he always comes to the uh, practical uh, part. He always say, well, you know, this is something you have to accept because I'm getting older. So he didn't give a special, you know, he didn't spoil. <laughs> He didn't spoil your physical discomfort. He didn't spoil, absolutely, he didn't spoil his emotion at all. So that's why Rinpoche is an example that if, you know, someone, yeah, I mean, he had uh, uh, difficulties, you know, a lot of uh, transformation, a lot of uh, uh, lose in his life, you know, um, <clears throat> a, lot, a lot of uh, close relatives died or, you know, etc. But uh, there's a uh, 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 one uh, sentence in, in the man training said that Yidi and Bacha Jin the gum means uh, always meditate on um, uh, You always uh, should meditate on, uh, you know, um, comfortable feeling. Now, what does that really mean? That means uh, everything's going to be fine. You, know, you have to have that concept, even though you go through difficulties. <clears throat> so the, my first uh, emphasis is that uh, suffering we you know, describe, we talk about, right? The, the most suffering we talk about is the, the mental suffering, the emotions, uh, stress, depression i i think i have depression myself you know it's almost uh, impossible not to have depression once you come to our country <laughs> because you know uh, so sometimes you know i think depression is uh, if you have a lot of people you know or have depression and then it's a uh, it's sometimes contagious you know you, you you become part of that you know i have depression, other people have depression. But uh, sticking with the uh, teachings that uh, our great masters you know, did, uh, it's so helpful. They, just like we, we have mentioned earlier about Gambopas as simple um, instruction saying that uh, the nature of samsara is uh, empty, and nature of nirvana is empty. You know, sometimes you, when you do uh, <clears throat> practice meditation, you have some bliss, you have some insight, or you have some clarity, you have some uh, like uh, <clears throat> some uh, experience. And uh, so what Gambopa was saying is that uh, just to be who you are, just to be uh, your nature, you know, uh, that, that feeling of bliss, that feeling of, uh, uh, you know, comfortable, feeling of uh, 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 positive is also emptiness in its, its, its nature. And also uh, 
lucidity or transparent or invisible. Uh, don't don't uh, hold on to concrete. <clears throat> the second uh, point I want to uh, uh, the second point that I want to make here is uh, uh, what Gamboba also mentioned that um, then what is the as a definition uh, I, mean, I mean the nature of the uh, uh, samsara and uh, nirvana what is the definition of samsara and nirvana and then he said that uh, the definition of samsara is uh, suffering and definition of nirvana uh, is uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, beyond suffering. So let's, when we talk about some, you know, sometimes we talk about samsara and nirvana, we, we kind of uh, recollect or uh, imagine the samsara as something so vast, nirvana is so vast, so hard to grasp. But uh, once again, we have to be practical. That means uh, pointing yourself, ourselves to your own mind. Okay, what is the, my own world? What is the nirvana and what is samsara? Well, if you lost whole day in delusion, <laughs> if you just constantly, you know, experiencing the depression or stress and uh, that creates the anger, that creates the sensitivity and the fear. Well, that is uh, samsara because uh, as uh, Matya Buddha explained, samsara is nothing more than confusion. He did not, uh, uh, he did not uh, describe uh, uh, samsara as uh, uh, <clears throat> No, no, apart from, uh, apart from uh, our confusion. So as long as we lost into this delusional state, oh my God, we, we create a lot of negative karma. You know, uh, almost like uh, there's no hope to liberate, you know, wishing to liberate doesn't work. You can't, you know, if we just lost like, uh, we don't say 24 hours, we, you know, or we sleep. Uh, some people sleep eight <clears throat> hours. Or, uh, some people sleep, uh, I don't know. But uh, obviously you have uh, 12 hours in you know, a whole day. Uh, and sometimes uh, this is, uh, I give you my example. Sometimes I really lost, I just lost whole day, just uh, you know, a lot of stress and then just to keep thinking, you know, because you just, uh, you know, basically putting more woods in the fire, right? And then um, do a few prayers expecting, oh, when we are die, I'm going to take a deep breath and Amitabha's pure, or, or I will be liberated. I think this is just a, uh, wishful thinking because as Buddha mentioned, uh, we are the protector of our own. So that means uh, the moment we experience stress or negative thoughts, we have to transform into positive or um, into nirvana. So let's Try not to, you know, <clears throat> advance samsara is just so advanced. Just let's recognize our own mental state of samsara. It's very obvious, it's very uh, hurtful, anger or jealous or, or this circulation, right? This circulation. And sometimes, unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunate, but we are addicted. Sometimes we're naturally addicted with that, that, that negative thoughts, you know. And uh, if you get angry, then we just uh, blazing that anger with all kinds of uh, cause and uh, <clears throat> you just, uh, but not recognizing how much negative karma we accumulating. It's just so much a day 
so much in, in within that day. <clears throat> so this is the pity of uh, us that you know we want to be uh, we want to be liberated from samsara, but we just uh, created samsara and uh, you know uh, <clears throat> basically pressing down in the samsara. It is a such uh, example, you know. <clears throat> uh, and uh, deeper and deeper. Uh, so that is samsara. So nirvana for our own um, small world of our mind. The nirvana means that uh, a practitioner has that mindfulness, ones that we are afraid of uh, negative thoughts. That's number one. If someone cares about karma, excuse me, someone cares about uh, negative uh, karma that create uh, uh, suffering and someone really believes that I think everybody has that uh, conscience or mindfulness because nobody wants to you know, intentionally hurt uh, or like experience suffering that's number one because <clears throat> just a small example you know any food that creates you know stomach problem if you recognize it nobody nobody wants to do it intentionally but this is uh, you know more than that this is a uh, years or eons of uh, suffering <clears throat> secondly we all know that you know, i know you know that we don't want this want to be lost in this delusion and state of mind we want to have happiness we want to be peaceful and we want to, you know, do that. But uh, then, then don't just uh, egoistically, you know, carried by this uh, negative thoughts. Let's walk it, you know, just walk it moment by moment, uh, moment by moment. Uh, right now, okay, uh, whatever happened in the past, it's just, uh, <clears throat> uh, you know, uh, just like you just went to bathroom <laughs> to throw throw away and now you just start right now you know right now moment by moment because all these delusions all these uh, negative thoughts are moment by moment it's not just uh, all of a sudden you know you see a huge mountain blocking you it's not like that it's just a uh, moment by moment so you have great opportunity to work with your mind moment by moment right so when you do that what, what as a practitioner there are terms right when you <clears throat> work with your mind we call it self liberation a lot of people uh a practitioner say that it was self liberation is a uh, 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 like dzogchen a uh, maati uh, a term but it is actually widely used in in <clears throat> kaju lineage like muhammad we call self liberation so self liberation mean uh, versus uh, uh, self uh, so that's the problem as long as you cannot liberate your thoughts you know, self liberation you know, watching your mind moment by moment uh, <clears throat> uh, like uh, there's another uh, word for that vocabulary moment by moment or moment i think i'm thinking about chinese word <laughs> so it's, it's it's just moment by moment so as long as you cannot liberate or recognize your nature of thoughts then it becomes self. So self becomes, become, I mean, versus self liberation. So one, once it becomes self, then everything what we do with selfish uh, motivation, which creates so much problem. <clears throat> so that's why, you know, sometimes it's very important for us to just to capture the essence of samsara and nirvana instead of just a samsara is so vast out there and nirvana is so far away from us. It's just only, uh, <clears throat> you know, it's just a 
uh, your hand to the front and the left hand. You know? uh, if you flip your hand like this, it's nirvana, and then you know, um, the moment you go like this, you're against your self liberation, it becomes a, a samsara. So um, I did say I have five points. You now, uh, one was uh, uh, talk about uh, uh, <clears throat> the nature of. Uh, uh, suffering on the edge of samsara as nirvana, and second is uh, uh, suffering itself, you know, creating negative karma. A uh, third is uh, uh, the nirvana and samsara are uh, a description of our own mind. So, fourth is uh, so, how do we really practice this, uh, you know, the daily problems, you know, uh, transform into insight? What well, problem versus insight? What's the problem? That is the path we have to take it. When we talk about problem, of course, there are so many uh, political problem, mm, there are social problem, <laughs> social distance. <laughs> there, there, there are so so many family problem, you know, uh, and. Uh, now, especially we are stuck in, with our family, the, the ones we talk about, our loved ones. Sometimes it's just uh, as much as you love, you know, turns into problem. Uh, and uh, so problem have many, many, many definitions, but only one thing that practitioners has to work uh, out. That is the root of problem. So the root of problem, okay, now giving myself an example, I have a lot of problems. <clears throat> I could create a problem with my family, etc. But uh, one of the one of the very effective <clears throat> practice that uh, I feel so uh, powerful. Uh, and uh, is, uh, that part is something like Rinpoche always emphasize. It's not that famous. You know? uh, when you hear that, oh, uh, it's not about the Muhammad, it's not about anything else. It's just uh, impermanence. That's just uh, something you hear all the time, impermanence. So this is uh, why impermanence is so effective uh, dealing with uh, problems. Um, <clears throat> First of all, impermanence has uh, its own uh, essence. The essence for impermanence is always self-liberation. Why? Because when you experience powerful depression or negative thoughts and uh, you will think about impermanence oh yeah i'm experiencing now but it is impermanent you know, it doesn't just stay there <clears throat> the moment you think about impermanence is the process of uh, disappearing your feelings or disappearing your uh, depression or whatever experience you are experiencing secondly you don't just sit there and uh, taking this punishment because it's impermanent. I want, I can't just uh, stuck here and get angry and create more negative karma. Instead, may I able to experience all suffering of other sentient beings' depression. As I mentioned, I think I have depression too. Uh, when I think of that, it helps a lot because when you think about uh, what's going on out there <clears throat> and versus what's going on with us staying home <laughs> and cook and practice. I mean, we are basically in a such beautiful vacation, stay home. Not only that, we have Dhamma practice to do. A lot of people don't have that. A lot of people stay home and just uh, only, you know, watching news and just getting crazy. So I am permanent <clears throat> would uh, uh, remind us, oh, I can't just waste my time. If I waste like five minutes, 
and I waste it. Everything is impermanent. I want to use this opportunity to transform this problem into practice. And uh, then third, uh, it says impermanence. When you think about impermanence, uh, uh, and uh, you have a sense of a strong compassion to your family or others because uh, they don't know about impermanence. You know, they think that you know whatever emotion they experience is just right there all the time. And they have like a depression always stuck there, but they don't know about impermanence. So if you are <clears throat> practicing permanence, then you feel a sense of compassion to other person, you know, thinking that, oh, this person doesn't know about impermanence, this person doesn't know, know the change, and you have a, you know, impermanence uh, create compassion. And I often say this uh, you know, because it's it's very important practice. Uh, as Changin mentioned that, you know, you only think about impermanence in like three times a day, you know, how many times we go to bathroom? <laughs> uh, seven, eight times. But how many times, uh, how many meals we do we eat? Like three times, that's for sure. Three times in a fixed number. So why can't we think about impermanence you know, every meal we eat? And uh, so the, I think, uh, you know, problem is uh, self-creation. And uh, once we are so attached to and uh, have this uh, self, not able to have self-liberation of uh, thoughts or not able to think about impermanence, you know, we become so selfish and uh, <clears throat> we feel that every word that we say, you know, people should hear, every point we make, people should agree. <laughs> And, uh, you know, we, we want to hurt our voice and, uh, you know, uh, just for that, then uh, uh, make a big deal. So that is my uh, fourth point, uh, is that, uh, <clears throat> <clears throat> Is that you know uh, the path that Reggie Lyon upon? I said one single uh, method uh, can be, of course, you know, Dharma is so advanced. Dharma is like water. Whoever has thirsty, whatever, whoever drinks, it, it helps, you know? And uh, then my last point is that uh, <clears throat> this is our problem. I, I have a problem, you have a problem. <clears throat> when we receive teaching, we are refreshed. I'm uh, not saying that my teaching will refresh you, uh, but we just feel like inspired. Uh, we feel like, oh yeah, that's so true. You know, everything <clears throat> seems then you know, next couple of or three, four days, we are a little different, softer or oh, mindfulness. And then the samsara takes over and we go back to that addiction addiction of, uh, let's say, go back to self quarantine. <laughs> right? We just uh, put ourselves into quarantine and, and uh, no longer uh, be social uh, with uh, uh, you know, opportunities or social with uh, practice. We go back to self quarantine and then, no, experience mental illness, illness, et cetera. So my last point is uh, it has to be there all the time. <clears throat> has to be, that. let's use the word consistent. Because why we have this uh, such ability to hurt ourselves, hurt our others all the time. So why, why we just keep doing that, you know, why we say to ourselves, enough is enough, you know? You know, people protest, you know? And why don't we protest ourselves? <clears throat> say, you know, you really, your ego or your selfish thought, you know, you just really uh, tricked me, cheated me you know, all these years, all this, my whole life. And now, you know, I will, from, I will warn you that I have 
I really use my own weapons because uh, everything what you taught me, your, you know, your ego, ego, whatever you taught me is just so um, suffering so much. So I, I, you know, I, now I want to <clears throat> use uh, the reality, the truth. So from this teaching, I would like you to take three points. And one is that uh, uh, practical, you have to be very practical because otherwise the teaching is teaching. Once it's gone, then it's gone. But practical, which means uh, the first is that you have to exercise that your emotions are transparent, visible, that the sound is the Facebook <clears throat> and uh, emptiness, right? Sometimes, if you say emptiness and people hear this so much, oh, it's just emptiness. Doesn't that 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 word doesn't that doesn't bring uh, like a <clears throat> kind of a <clears throat> immediate healing? And then when you uh, think the second term, invisible, uh, it helps for you to have a sense of liberation. Then third is like a transparent, right? Transparent. We are not uh, uh, concretely caught with that emotion. <clears throat> That's number one. Uh, number two is that uh, nirvana is a liberation of your thought. Uh, nirvana. Our own world. Let's don't talk about the enlightened being or <clears throat> First woman, you know, second woman, such as such, you know, and because it all has to start with uh, self liberation. And uh, so, nirvana, you know, nyang nindepa means beyond suffering. So, when you experience such negative thought, and when you are able to think of emptiness or invisible and transparent, there's a liberation taking place. I'm not talking about this is the liberation you know, Buddhahood, I'm talking about, this is a part of that process, a part of that journey. <clears throat> and uh, then third uh, is, as I mentioned to you, that uh, daily problem is a creation of our own ego, you know, uh, selfish, and uh, not, especially not believing in karma, you know, karma creation. So. Uh, you have to think about impermanence. You know, morning you get up, uh, your loved ones uh, there, stay alive. You are very happy, and uh, <clears throat> thinking about impermanence. And then one hour later, a lot of things change. Or uh, then uh, you know you have. I think if somebody really truly think about impermanence, you may not cut into too much uh, depression or stress. And uh, throughout the day, you know, you walk, whatever you do, just trying to think about impermanence, you know, time is passing and then you treasure your time. And uh, <clears throat> I say these things out here, okay, I'm just pouring my feelings or teaching out there, but it doesn't mean I could do that. You know, after I say this, I go back to YouTube or something. May, may waste my time. <laughs> That's true, but I do reset among people. I have a special uh, commitment. So I have to watch YouTube and then I have to reset among people. So I, I would like to make those five points, you know, trying to be practical and trying to be something really useful, especially this uh, pandemic. <clears throat> and of course, uh, uh, I tell you that never think you are, uh, stuck into home, you know, it's much better than stuck in the hospital or something, right? Just think about those and you, you, will, you will have a sense of uh, 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 relief when you think about, oh, I'm at home, I'm not sick, right? Those individuals who are in the, in the hospital and uh, <clears throat> unwillingly get sick and unwillingly uh, going through the process and uh, and willingly, you know, see all those problems or suffering. And, uh, they they <clears throat> they are the center of suffering. So we have to sometimes, you know, uh, comfort ourselves. And uh, so now I think that's it. And, you know, I kind of uh, 
crumbled with my mm, mm, explanations, etc. I do hope that you know some of this uh, helpful for you, and uh, I myself also trying, uh, and uh, a lot of times I'm off, but uh, uh, sometimes I back to right traction, right track. <laughs> so I would like you to ask questions, you know, for the remaining time. Anyone have any questions? Okay. Yeah, I raised my hand. Um, this Abhishad. I am. Um, right, my my phone doesn't have a thing to hang on to. Um. So I I just want to get clarification that um when we're having unpleasant emotions that um walking through them is part of as part of our learning. Mm -hmm. Um. And understanding it is the is helping us to walk through it. Absolutely, you know. Uh, for my own example, I learned uh, a lot from suffering than uh, happiness. <clears throat> and uh, when you are in suffering, and uh, as a practitioner, uh, you really will use uh, uh, what you have learned. You know, uh, I shouldn't be so stressed. I shouldn't, you know, I did three retreats twice. <laughs> but uh, when that happens, when stress or a lot of, you know, or suffering happens, when I think of uh, the teachings like Kambopa or teachings I have learned or like, you know, and uh, uh, it's so healing. That means uh, uh, <clears throat> suffering is the only one that reminds you to practice and if you everything's going well and you probably will be on beach or party now <laughs> but suffering you know it is mentioned suffering have many qualities so one is uh, uh, when you experience suffering then you really think about the karmic condition uh, when you experience suffering you will renounce from samsara when you experience suffering then you really understand that the people's uh, suffering so they will have compassion so when you experience suffering if you are uh, a practitioner this will peel off a negative karma so suffering has a lot of uh, uh, qualities so that, that's been ma mainly my practice and I've, i you know it's been a steady progress but i've also been hearing a lot about the non-dual perspective and sometimes I'm confused. Like mm -hmm. I got the sense that I needed to change the way I was practicing. It was, and I think it was to open myself up because the way I was practicing was really good up to that point. And then it was time for me to lighten up in a certain way. That was my subtle guidance. And so I started exploring more different ways of, of doing things, trying to go more mm -hmm. into my heart because I was, I was being only doing more equanimity and I needed to put, bring in more lightness, more mm -hmm. heart practice. And when I would listen to non-duality, um, I mean, I understand it objectively, but it doesn't seem like it's an approach that I can follow. Like, it's like, I mean, I can go into spaciousness and I can see that in a moment, but all my stuff, I don't trust maybe, it's, I don't believe, mm -hmm. or I, I don't know that it'll just go away. Like, that's confusing to me because you have Buddhism and then you have, and, and yet they're both friends but they have a different approach. So it kind of confuses me. Oh, I see. Um, Buddha actually taught Dhamma, uh, like, a little bit look like a contradicted because uh, we all have a you know, <clears throat> contradicted uh, 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 character everybody's different you know the way buddha taught sometimes he say you know there's karma sometimes there's everything emptiness because people have different disposition and uh, if he taught someone just uh, you know doesn't believe in emptiness and then they say emptiness they cannot apprehend it so that's why buddha's uh, teaching is very very skillful you know i often <clears throat> give an example 
uh, as restaurants, right? And uh, people go to restaurants and, uh, you know, some people like uh, sushi, some people like pizza, some people like, uh, some people just like so hot chili, you know, this Thai curry or something, but they're, 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 they're all kind of, so people have different, uh, but they are contradicted. Those foods, some are very mild, some are, you know, it's, but at the same time, it uh, fulfills the individual's needing. And uh, regard with the uh, non-dual uh, practice, you know, there's a uh, uh, Zen practice. It's very much uh, talk about the non-dual uh, practice, and then in this uh, Tibetan Buddhism <clears throat> talk about that uh, as well. And uh, so the goal, let's say, uh, uh, for meditation is uh, no side effects. Uh, what what do I mean about you no know, said effects is that you know even you have experienced blissful it's a said effect even you have a joy that is said effect what the the actual uh, non dual meditation experience is a uh, very uh, innocent it's like uh, there's no said effects there's no colors there's no uh, you know uh, characters it's just uh, uh, like water you know, it doesn't have to add any different uh, tradition of teas so right? just to water pure water uh, mm -hmm. but uh, you know uh, easy than uh, easier than to practice so uh, i think uh, sometimes uh, uh, we're all looking for some exciting experience that is not really uh, the destination yeah, I, mine isn't really about the excitement. It's more mm -hmm. about I experiencing clarity and if I've experienced it many times at many levels, right? It's just a little more clear, a little more clear. And I imagine that as dots continue to connect and I, I surrender, like I lighten up as I go, that it, eventually um, there'll be this moment of clarity where it's like, okay, I, I sort of, I get it. <laughs> and then life can, can keeps going or something through that. But, Day. but that's just kind of how it's been up to this point you know so you have uh, done a lot of practice in tibetan buddhism or what is your uh, initial practice or current practice if you don't mind um it's kind of it's a mixture i think oh. of different traditions it's it's more just i've been following my heart and so i was doing practice not knowing I was doing practice for about 10 years before I discovered um, meditation, I discovered the world of spiritual learning. Mm -hmm. Before uh, that, I, I, I didn't know how to reach it, but I was making progress anyway. Uh, that's wonderful. Yeah, I think I would say keep practicing and uh, <clears throat> it's always nice to have practice, you know, in this world and to able to benefit other beings. Yeah, but thank you. Yeah, I, I just wanna say that I appreciate how when I see a little bit of everything, I'm seeing that everybody's teaching the same truth. So it helps me overcome that false information <laughs> that people put out there. And I think I'm tr trying to find one place to settle, but it's it's not going to be quick. <laughs> yeah, it will take a while, time, but you will get there. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. uh, Lama Karma, what is the meaning of the Mahamudra? Which was question? Um, my name is Betty Chow. I was uh, Daniel's friend, email yeah. friend. Um, what does that mean if the, about the Mahamudra? I want to know. Oh yeah, definitely. And uh, my my question, uh, if you don't mind, uh, uh, or what kind of practice you have done uh, before? <clears throat> Yeah, I just uh, received the Mahamudra empowerment from the Kagyu, but I want to know what is that talk about? Oh, okay. I never heard this Mahamudra empowerment, but where did you receive it from? Zigong Kagyu, Renchen Chuling, 
but mm -hmm. it's from the also from the Kagyu law, Kagyu tradition. But uh, um, I was talking about the Mahamudra. The what, mm -hmm. what does that mean? Oh yeah, okay. I will. I you no, know, it's it's actually very advanced to subject, but I will try. So Maha and uh, Mudra. So Maha means. Uh, you know, it's a Sanskrit, it means a pervasive or great or <clears throat> like, a, like a space. You know, everyone, no matter who you are, have the uh, pervasive uh, nature of wisdom, that is Maha. Mudra means uh, this uh, pervasive nature covers everything. You know, there's nothing that is not part of that uh, Pervasive natural primordial wisdom. Oh yeah, I love to practice dharma. That's wonderful. I enjoy. Yeah, it. I was practice uh, sokshen and mahamudra from mm -hmm. my own guru. That helps me a lot. Yeah, dharma means uh, medicine. So heals mm -hmm. the sickness of uh, negative emotions. I rejoice. <clears throat> Yeah, so my guru tell me, keep practicing. <laughs> yeah, please follow your guru. Yeah, that's wonderful advice. He, he didn't say stop it or just to keep doing it. You know, that's why I was saying that my last uh, point is that be consistent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Uh, so, Lama Karma, thank you so much. Um, you. So, okay, so what you're what you're saying is uh, that when you start having some intense feelings, especially negative feelings, then to think of them as uh, transparent, uh, to try to think of them as impermanent, and mm -hmm. to, to try to like that? Well, um, I think what I was saying is that uh, we normally talk about nirvana and samsara in, in very in very advanced. Sometimes uh, maybe this is my concept, you know, oh, samsara is uh, really advanced. Samsara is really messy. Samsara has so much to talk about and the nirvana is you know, also vast, <clears throat> etc. But we also have to be practical, which means uh, what is some sort of nirvana within our own environment, our own mind? Because once again, when you talk about some sort of nirvana, it is always constantly practical, has to be practical. That means when you experience negative thought or anger or something like that, and uh, you can't just, oh, I'm. I just got angry or I got emotional and uh, then, you know, just uh, keep blazing or keep uh, uh, building, building, building. And uh, because, you know, that's opposite of us. You know, we want to free from that, but instead we just building it. So then when you experience that, or if you say, Okay, the samsara is nothing more than a confusion. So this is my confusion or delusion of emotion. At the same time, this emotion has a healing power within this emotion that is a nature's emptiness. And also it is transparent. It is a, a pervasive. I just put that word again. <clears throat> I mean, uh, extra, but uh, transparent. Uh, uh, Emptiness, and then I was saying something else. What was that? Mm. Um, we all forgot. In invisible. Ah, okay. Yeah. Invisible because it's not concrete. You know, it's invisible. So why the moment you think about that instead of a building as concrete, your sense of uh, transparency, you have sense of uh, 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 emptiness, you have a sense of uh, uh, invisible, and then you know, pervasive, it's not just one place stuck there, right? 
Yeah, it, then it's like mist. Mm -hmm. Then, then you 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 see the other side. You know, <laughs> you're just walking through that darkness, and then now I, I can see some of our uh, uh, Zoom users. You know, uh, you have <laughs> there are light going on behind you, <laughs> so that's what you're going to see. <laughs> the tunnel you're going through instead of just an endless tunnel. There's a light comes out. That is the transparent, and uh, you have a sense of. Uh, healing taking place. That means that emotion does have healing power. The, the, it, when we're having those negative emotions, it's actually a time when we could really heal. But if we could just stop and stop seeing it as being so real, then it, it's like the other side is, is healing. Exactly. The, the negative feeling basically asking us to do that, but we are a very stubborn and just... Uh, <laughs> I, I just uh, grab onto that, uh, you know, <clears throat> uh, 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 a piece of uh, fire, just burning our, uh, you know, all the good things, burning our relationship, burning our, our virtuous actions. So that, that's that's the definition of our smartness, <laughs> which is not so smart. I just wanted to say one something funny that I thought of when you talk about funny. Nirvana. I know because this is super yeah. serious, but I have to say something funny. But it's funny to me anyway. So Nirvana and <laughs> Samsara and Nirvana, when I have to go to Costco for whatever reason, like mm -hmm. to pick up contact lenses or like whatever it is, I always walk in there <laughs> with this thing. I go, here I go. So Nirvana and Samsara, inseparable. Because Costco is the perfect place for Nirvana and Samsara with all the people in there just, you know, like attached to everything and moving around so fast. And like, mm -hmm. I don't know, it just makes me think of that. And I always say that before I walk in, I remind myself, this is Nirvana and Samsara inseparable, Costco. It's just an everyday Dharma thought. We're going to laugh first. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to crack up because it cracks me up every time. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> the only one really laughing is my sister. <laughs> no, I laughed. All right, I, laughed. <laughs> I laughed. Okay, <laughs> cool. I don't know why. I, mean, I don't know why I have that thought all the time when I walk in there. But it's like I laughed. My dharma my practice is washing <laughs> over me every time I go there. It's very true, though. Yeah, it's yeah, it's that's actually very true. That means wherever you go, you carry the that practice you know i do i carry it in my heart everywhere i go um and i just also wanted to mention that i i just really appreciate your honesty which is that you, you know you're just saying that you get depressed too and that you know yeah. that you we can. all and that being in this country who wouldn't mm -hmm. and so i just really appreciate hearing that you know well, I, I do have depression i do have emotion and everything but uh, i think uh, as I always express that I'm you know, so lucky to have Dhamma because at the end, no one can protect you from any of this. Your family can protect, you know, no one else, you know, but you. That means you versus the, you, you have Dhamma. And so Dhamma is uh, inexhaustible. The more you practice, there, there's no such thing. Oh, you know, I just practice today and then, <clears throat> then it's finished. <laughs> <laughs> it's inexhaustible because you have an exhaustible wisdom within your mind. You know? Yeah, now more than ever. Yeah. Thank you, Amala. Yeah, That's well, all I had to say. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I'm still laughing, yeah. I have to say something. Uh, I, I think it's amazing how, um, like you're saying, the problems are so stubborn. Mm. Uh, <laughs> Like ego seems seems to me that just something I went through recently. How e ego is very tricky. Like, you mm -hmm. know, you think you're practicing well, then something comes along, and you think, well, oh, yeah. I'll do this, and then there you go again. So I guess the thing is, just don't don't how to avoid being tricked by your own ego, you know, buying, yeah, I buying think, into it. Yeah. I think you know. Where that practice is going, 
well or not, then uh, <clears throat> the problem uh, kind of uh, judge you. <laughs> yeah. You know, we, we uh, whenever the problem comes up, you know, uh, we do have that habitual pattern. But yeah. you know, that stopping feeling, the habitual pattern, is uh, built based on negative pa pattern. But once you, uh, you know, begin to practice and practice and practice, uh, and uh, then it's a uh, slowly builds your other um, habitual pattern, right? And uh, Rinpoche used to give a perfect example that is a, a folded uh, paper, right? Mm -hmm. So at the beginning when you unfold, it goes back, uh, but then slowly, you know, it's, uh, it's flat. And uh, <clears throat> that is my really uh, important last point is that uh, be consistent and every day is an opportunity. You know? You have to have, uh, don't think I, I'm getting late. I go to bed uh, late. So if, if you have any more questions, I'm happy to answer. Lama Karma? Yes, ma'am. Uh, 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 it's Marilyn again. Uh, uh, yeah, I do have a question. Um, mm -hmm. I, I've been making a little, a little prayer, um, and I'm not sure if it's, based on proper interpretation of, of Buddhism. But I, I like to make, sometimes I will make a little prayer for 49 days for someone who has died. Often it's someone I don't know, like mm -hmm. recently it's been like George Floyd or and some of the people here that we know of that have been killed. And um, I know that they're going, they've died and they're going in, Bardo, mm -hmm. and I say a prayer, a brief prayer where I, I pray that uh, they will be surrounded by Buddhas and Bodhisattvas to mm -hmm. help them through Bardo. Mm -hmm. and that, number one, and I'm not sure if that's right. And then um, two, and then I pray, uh, may they go to Dewaten and mm -hmm. see Amitabha's face. Mm -hmm. And, and well, the main thing is, is, is that um, appropriate to ask that Buddhas and Bodhisattvas surround them and sort of help guide them through Wardo? Is that okay to ask that? Absolutely, you know, um, Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, they see, they don't care what uh, <clears throat> color or gender or, uh, you know, um, country or Nothing. They all they all see uh, like a mother sees, uh, uh, you know, her own children, uh, and uh, <clears throat> that is very thoughtful. For example, like uh, uh, there was a list of nuns, uh, you know, uh, uh, for a while ago, maybe a month or a few months ago, there was a list of nuns. People passed away, you know, or printed on New York Times, and I can understand that. <clears throat> the Tango Nandri and uh, let them do prayer and uh, absolutely, you know, uh, the, there's people uh, who passed away or who got killed or who, who people who is doing bad things. It doesn't matter what they do, regardless they are, you know, subject to prayer. Good, thank you. I, and then I also throw in, may they have a very good uh, or excellent rebirth. And I, yeah, this is a brief absolutely. prayer to ask for those what three things. Mm -hmm. What I pray I do is so, so important. You know, uh, people <clears throat> sometimes ask uh, questions, what Buddhism is doing this during pandemic, you know. Uh, and uh, I often say that uh, this world needs uh, collective prayer, collective uh, meritorious actions. The reason why we're facing these conditions, the reason why we're facing so much problem is because once again, it's uh, you know, <clears throat> manifesting some of uh, the things that we did wrong. And uh, prayer is extremely important uh, you know, to, to overcome 
beside the you know scientific condition and uh, beside for example like in buddhism sometimes uh, people even it's mentioned in liturgy of Buddhist teachings that uh, people just uh, damage this planet you know, too much and there are so many and or non-human beings affected by our own actions and they sometimes get upset and they <clears throat> those powerful spirits could bring destructions like earthquake or such you know and uh, prayer is very very important latin lamps very important and uh, that's why at ktd you know we have this uh, ongoing prayers and uh, uh, teachings and uh, medicine with the prayer etc Yes, I know it's it's not a traditional prayer, but it's I guess maybe from uh, the Western, more Western traditions of making up our own prayers for. But I I wanted to base them on Buddhist tradition, on Buddhist. Well, slowly, I think uh, even though you you know you just think that's how I think of you know. Uh, my deceased mother used to uh, do her own prayers. She has a lot to talk about. After she'd done actual <laughs> traditional prayer, she would say in, in words like, uh, <clears throat> you know, um, I just trying to think of her lines. Oh yeah. Uh, may I able to uh, pure of a negative karma of uh, killing intentionally or uh, you know, uh, or, or, or the the sentient beings that I stepped on accidentally, uh, and uh, you know, uh, the the she has a lot of prayer lists, and uh, those are kind of you know verbal kind of uh, talks, but it's very beautiful. And uh, uh, you also remember uh, our great master Kembrumbuche. You know, he always uh, <clears throat> used a different level, but uh, he's given an example that in the end of every, every teaching he. Uh, kind of reset this beautiful uh, special aspiration, uh, you know, uh, uh, kind of explanation, and then Lama Yeshe translates, right? So it's it's a good intention, and it's very good because Dhamma doesn't have a tradition; it's in nature. You know, it's uh, for all sentient beings. So George Floyd or you know all these people, uh, you know, died unfortunately. You know, they need a lot of uh, prayer and. Uh, that's good. Thank you, Lama Karma, for keeping me and us on the Dharma path. Thank you. Are you guys keeping me on Dharma path? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lama Lao. Really appreciate you being with us tonight here yeah. at our little virtual Sangha that is now <laughs> spread all over into other states also. I so know. um I can see it on this I can see some uh, other song. Yeah. And um we hope you'll join us again soon. We always appreciate you being here. We miss you, yeah. miss yeah. not yeah. being yeah. able to be a KTD. <laughs> you you then you help you another joke. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Thanks for like listening. To, yeah, I'm I'm really, you know, this is something uh, I really rejoice and thank for having me there because then I feel you know, I'm serving uh, a little bit of, uh, part of the Cambodian activity, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, that you know, <clears throat> no matter uh, you know, uh, whether Rinpoche is present or not, we have, uh, especially when Rinpoche is not there, uh, this is our responsibility. We cannot uh, complain, we cannot, uh, you know, uh, you have to do this uh, uh, in order to fulfill his wishes. And uh, uh, I'm very also happy that uh, 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 the one that Rinpoche wasn't able to see in person, that was the Columbus KTC rebuilding. And uh, it's uh, <clears throat> happening very soon. And uh, so many Sangha members uh, support him financially. And uh, I would kind of continue encouraged to do that. I think this is going to be a uh, very special center because uh, you know we have three lamas and they were jealous but <laughs> <laughs> what can you do that they merit <laughs> <laughs> so i'm really really happy and uh, 
So I would like to dedicate this merit for the benefit of all sentient beings, long life for all the great masters, uh, especially may able to fulfill Kimber Bache's uh, <clears throat> wish that is uh, you know, continue practice and uh, continue support our centers. Uh, and uh, may we able to benefit many sentient beings who are really uh, so much in need now. And may this disease will, uh, <clears throat> uh, in, you know, uh, disappear <laughs> like a miracle <laughs> <laughs> through the <laughs> through the invisible uh, prayer <laughs> gather and may be able to discover the vaccine, you know, soon. And uh, mm. so we pray that. And let's do the um, short prayer. あ、そのんで、たんじえせばね、たんじえ、たんじえ、たんじえ、たんじえ、たんじえ、たんじえ、たんじえ、たんじえ、たんじえ、たんじえ、たんじえ、たんじえ、たんじえ、たんじえ、